Okay, in this video, we're going to be talking about the Mandalorian after this. Hello out there, I'm the oldest nerd, and uh, we watched episode six and seven of The Mandalorian, and uh, I really didn't have much to say about uh, chapter six. It was not a bad episode, but not a whole lot to really talk about. Uh, the um, They go on kind of a caper. They, they go to spring a prisoner, and... Beyond that, uh, it it had uh, some twists and turns in it. It was entertaining enough. Um, it's the first time that we've seen such elaborate sets built for a uh, for a ship, and that was interesting. And there was some good fight scenes. There was some good droid action, and um, there was the Mandalorian once again working with a team. Um, but that's pretty much all I have to say about it. It was kind of an in-between episode. And uh, episode 7, uh, chapter 7, The Reckoning, was one that was of incredibly more interest. It just dropped on Wednesday. And um, that's another thing that, that we should mention, is that uh, these episodes are not dropping at any regular intervals that we can tell. One is dropped on a Friday, one's dropped on a Thursday, one's dropped on a Wednesday. Uh, you can't tell exactly when it's going to come down next. As I was looking to review Chapter 6, uh, Chapter 7 had already come down. And it's a good thing. Uh, chapter 7 is a much more interesting show, The Reckoning. We predicted that we probably would see more of the, the Ugnaught and of uh, Kara, and in fact, we see them both at the same time uh, or in the same episode. Uh, it seems that uh, the Mandalorian has come to the understanding that he is going to be forever hunted until there is something that is going to resolve uh, this uh, hunt that's on him about the child. He is contacted by Karga uh, back on uh, Navarro, kind of in charge of the city and uh, has connections to the guild and would be willing to reinstate the Mandalorian into the guild and um, provide him very handsome recompense if he can take care of the original client that was wanting the child to begin with. And so uh, the Mandalorian realizes that it's probably a trap, but uh, he doesn't really have any choice but to go back or to be forever hunted. And so uh, he decides that he needs some backup, and he goes back and finds uh, Kara, who uh, is it's rem reminiscent of the uh, one of the early scenes of Raiders of the Lost Ark, where... Indiana Jones meets uh, his old uh, girlfriend, uh, played by Karen Allen, and uh, they uh, she's in a bar winning bets, uh, drinking people under the table. This is a similar thing where Kara here is in uh, kind of a fight where they're tied together and uh, is allowing people around her to bet on her or the other guy, and reaps the rewards of it. And so the Mandalorian comes in saying that he needs her for a job, and after a bit of convincing, she goes along. The same thing with the Ugnaught, whose name we now find out is Quill. And uh, Quill is willing to go along just because he believes in freedom and uh, does not want to take any money for it and any more than uh, he wanted to go along with the Mandalorian to begin with. So uh, they are off on a noble quest to try and uh, clear, the, clear Mando's name, uh, whatever that might be, and uh, also to make it safe for the child. Now, you know before it goes in that this is all going to be a trap, that there's going to be uh, some twists and turns in it, and there is without giving anything away. Uh, we also know that uh, the child has exhibited uh, powers of the Force. Now, uh, it's interesting in 
and and some people have pointed this out that it's very interesting that nobody seems to know what the force is nobody seems to recognize uh the the jedi knights or uh, any of the heroic deeds of luke skywalker and company uh evidently uh when you get far enough in the backwoods even on tatooine uh there's not much mention of luke skywalker and so uh, they don't seem to have any knowledge of the Force or the special powers of it, although Quill does mention that uh, he has heard rumors and legends uh, about uh, people with such power. And uh, they still don't know what to make out of the child, what species he is, or uh, whether he is intelligent or not. I mean, it's, it's a matter of not quite knowing what his species is and, and what to do with it and why he's so valuable. But they start to get, during the course of the episode, uh, some idea as just how valuable he is. And so uh, we see a power of the Force that's never been used before in any of the movies, uh, something that uh, has been talked about in some of the fan literature and um, comics and things like this, but nothing that's been uh, specifically canon. So uh, there's that. Um, in one point of it, uh, they talk about uh, the Mandalorian ship, the Razor Crest, uh, having a security protocol. And it's kind of interesting that they didn't use that when the um, Jawas were tearing it apart in a previous episode. It does not completely resolve itself. It is kind of a cliffhanger at the uh, point that it ends. So uh, uh, we're not going to say any more about it there. We will say, though, that uh, we uh, have seen the uh, Blurg, the uh, uh, fish dinosaur looking animals that. Uh, uh, came in with Quill. He uh, brought them with him as they were going back to Navarro. We see more stormtroopers. We see more uh, imperial types or ex-imperials as they're calling them or ex-imps or imps. Uh, kind of an interesting uh, way of uh, giving them kind of a derogatory name by just abbreviating. Uh, at any rate, um, and something even mentioned in Chapter 6, uh, where uh, one of the team that's going with the Mandalorian was an Imperial sharpshooter. The Mandalorian said, well, it shouldn't be much to worry about there, kind of sneering at the idea that anybody in the Empire can shoot straight. Uh, one of the things that fans have pointed out for a long time, that um, nobody from the Empire seems to be able to hit a target even from six feet away. And um, he points out that he's not a stormtrooper. Uh, at any rate, uh, of, of note here is uh, Giancarlo Esposito, who plays uh, the Moff, who is, uh, looks like he is going to be the chief adversary that's bringing in all of this firepower and uh, has designs on the child. So um, uh, with uh, that kind of star power, we expect to see... Um, uh, a great deal more of him through the rest of the series and the resolution to it is going to have to be something uh, very elaborate. He's got a lot of defense around him and uh, he obviously is no slouch in the intellect department and he knows what they're holding in the child and uh, no one else does. So uh, this is uh, where we leave it in the reckoning uh it's the either the beginning of the end for the mandalorian which is unlikely or the beginning of a great conflict that the mandalorian will barely make himself out of so uh, we look forward to how this resolves itself so i'd like to know what you think about the episode and uh, the last two if you wish and uh, what you think is uh, going to happen uh, what is the interest in the child beyond the more obvious idea that he has the power of the force the special effects were good they revisited a lot of the sets that they already had on navarro and um, they reintroduce the uh, pram they called it it looks kind of like a pokemon ball in which they helped uh, the child travel around so uh, they don't have to animate the cg character uh, 
too much. He doesn't have a very long stride anyway, so I suppose that would be uh, a little bit difficult. So uh, let me know what you think about this and other things. Uh, we are going to be talking about some other things. We know that Star Trek Picard has already been approved for a second season, even before the first season has been seen by anyone. The Expanse has uh, has already dropped its episodes on Netflix, and we're going to be watching some of those, and we'll let you know what we think about that coming up very soon. The holidays are quickly approaching. We're going to try to get a few videos out there uh, so you'll have something to while away your time if you have any time uh, between now and then. So uh, we appreciate your listening and watching, and um, we hope that you will subscribe and ring the bell so you know when the next video is coming because they will be coming like the Mandalorian at kind of uneven intervals. But until we see you again, don't go far.